Okay, guys. So today we will do about uh paper one and paper two technique ah, uh, kertas satu dan kertas dua. Okay, so uh we'll start with paper one ah. Uh. Okay, enough. Uh. Later now uh, all of you know your no Tivan's phone number. Be good. <laughs> so you can catch out him if you want. Okay, don't mind. Then good. <laughs> Okay, so we start paper one now. Uh. We start with question 12, uh, guys. Soalan 12, kita mula. I'm already famous in Penang. Okay, coming to my stage. <laughs> okay, paper one. Okay, this one. So make sure you guys respond actively uh, in the chat box so that when I ask question, terus respond. Uh, yeah. So this one we all covered already. Permutation, we talked about it that day. Okay, so we start with this. Okay, number 12, guys. Soalan 12 is about probability distribution. Tabuan ke barang kalian. Okay, I, I think you all study this chapter already, right? Am I right, everyone? Semua dah belajar ke bab ni? Yes or no? Study the idea, huh? so I go to, okay. So first part, usually, right, guys, when it come out in paper 1, they will still test you on both distribution, binomial and normal. Tabuan binomial and tabuan normal. So you need to know both also. Okay. How are you famous? Are you like hero? <laughs> Don't know lah, ask him. Okay, so first question, guys. They ask you to state. Wait, nah, let me get the pointer. Okay, they ask you to state the value of Px equals to 2 and Px equals to 3. Okay, guys. X, maybe sometimes you will confuse, right? Kadang-kadang kamu... Uh, I can't confuse the kid. What do they mean by the X actually? X just means by the event that is happening. Sesuatu peristiwa yang berlaku. So this is the meaning of X actually. Okay. Uh, guys, later later you guys chat. Huh? Now I'm teaching. Later I scared other people get uh, interrupted. So focus on the lesson. Okay, later you all talk at the end. Okay, so random variable X. Okay, so this binomial distribution. Okay, guys, when you see this first keyword, Five trials. Can you tell me what info can you get when they say five trials? <laughs> Apa info kamu boleh dapat bila soalan kata lima percubaan? Those form five only can answer. Huh? This one X. No, not X. There is another value for this. In binomial distribution, if you recall the formula. Later, we will have Form 4 question also, uh, guys. So don't worry. If those Form 4 join now, later, we will also discuss on Form 4. So you just stay put slowly. Uh, oh, you did this question. Okay. So five trials. Can you tell me, guys, what symbol we use? Apa symbol untuk menggambarkan lima percubaan? In the binomial formula, you can see over here. It's already shown to you. Dah tertunjuk. Yes, very good. We use N is 5 to show bilangan percubaan, number of trials. And usually, probability of success, we give it a symbol P. And probability of failure, kegagalan, we give it a symbol Q. You all must be familiar with this. Lah. Okay. So, the relationship between P and Q is shown over here. Hubungan antara P dan Q ditunjuk kat sini. So, 1 is actually the total probability, as you all know. Jumlah kebarang kalian dalam sesuatu peristiwa. 100%, which means 1 lah. 100% adalah 1. Okay. So how to state the value of Px equals to 2 and Px equals to 3? Very simple, guys. You just take 1, the total probability over here, jumlah kebang kalian, tolak dengan this value, tolak dengan this value. So you will get the middle over here. Okay, I think the form 4 also can understand this one because this one very simple. Very, very senang to understand this concept because mathematics also you all learn probability, right? Kebang kalian. So it's just the same concept. Okay, guys. So, can you understand part A? Boleh faham? Any question you have for part A? You know question I proceed. Huh? Okay, so part B. Okay, now showing question. Huh? Uh, revise now lah Andy. Ini adalah masa ulang kaji. So, now they ask you to tunjukkan P equals 3 over 16 Q. Okay, so. Okay, so this is the kind of question that uh, I will say quite hard lah, sedikit susah. But no worries, guys. You can always do it one. It's not that difficult. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, very little. Be- uh, that's why I ask you guys to share the link. Kamu kena kongsi link kat kawan-kawan so that more people can join. <laughs> okay, hands. Okay, guys, whenever you see the word hands uh, in admats, okay, damai lah, tak payah. Okay, so hands, what does hands mean actually? This is technique. Whenever you see the word hands, what does it mean? No, I'm telling uh, what is the thing that comes to your mind. Yes, very good, Samnad. Related to part A. Can you see here, guys? Jawapan kat part A is your working in part B. Your answer in part A is the jalan kira over here. Okay, so that's why whenever you see hands, refer back to your previous question. This is the keyword. Okay, so you can see over here. So they want you to show P is 3 over 16 Q. So how to show? You just use back the same formula over here. Kamu tukarkan info ini ke dalam formula tabuan binomial. You convert the... Uh, info over here to a binomial distribution formula. Okay, I hope you all still remember the formula. Huh? NCR, PR, QN minus R. Okay, itu adalah formula bagi tabuan binomial. Okay, so you just substitute the value only. 5C2, P and Q, we don't know the value. Jadi jangan gantikan. Don't substitute any value over here. Okay, so PQ, then 5C3, P3, Q2. Okay, equals to this value over here. Lepas tu, this one you can press calculator. Tekan saja 5C2, 5C3, you will get 10. And then you simplify. Buat ringkasan. Just simplify the whole expression only. And then kamu kena guna yang ni. You have to factorize ah guys. Buat pemfaktoran kat sini. Because you know that P tambah Q nilai dia adalah 1. Dalam tambahan binomial. So you can see over here. Q, Q plus P. Uh, you will get uh, 1 over here lah. Okay. So then, you can simplify and then already get the answer. Ini adalah jawapan kamu. P equals 3 over 16 Q. Uh, oh, this one, Ativan. Is it this one? Uh, what you, oh, this one. Uh. Oh, the beginning. Oh, wait. Uh. P and Q formula. Mean question A, part A. Uh. Oh, part B. This one is P and Q is the probability of success and probability of failure, respectively. Okay, so the formula is NCR, PR, Q, N minus R. So you say you just leave it as P and Q only. Because we don't know the value over here. Make a tabagi info. No information over here. So you just substitute P and Q only. Like how you do the formula normally. Okay, can you get it? Then only later you simplify. Ah, uh, like this lah. This one only you must simplify over here. Q plus P is 1, you substitute 1. Then you should be able to prove it already. Hmm. Okay, guys. So are you clear with the uh, first part? Uh, life equals, what do you mean? Hey there, guys. I think got accidentally when I don't know who joined. Okay, now we are good. Sorry, yeah, guys, for that one. I think he was scammer or what? <laughs> I remove. I block him from the call already. So okay, Eddie. Okay, so we go next one, huh? Continue to next page. Sorry, yeah, for that one. Okay, so we go next slide. Okay, guys, this slide, okay, yeah. Semua faham? This whole question, are you all, are you guys good on this? If you have any question. Okay, uh, so we proceed to the next part. Okay, now you can see the chal- the type of answer lah, Janice Jawapan for Chalon that is good and also not good. Okay, so you can see over, eh, sorry, wrong one. Okay, so this is how uh, Jawapan chal- Chalon prestasi tinggi lah, a good student will do for part A. Ini adalah Jawapan untuk bahagian A. And then for bahagian B, the question, calon tidak mengetahui nilai jumlah ke bahagian kalian. Ah, you see? That's why this info is important. You need to know total probability of any event is 1. So you can see over here, he didn't use 1. Okay, that's why he cannot count the nilai actually. Okay, guys. So we go next one. Huh? So this one is for 12B. Okay, so for those sederhana one, ah, you see guys? I highlight to you just now. 
calon kurang peka terhadap perkataan seterusnya. You must know the meaning of the word hence. Means refer to the previous part. Tengok balik bahagian sebelumnya. Info adalah kat situ. So you can see over here. They emphasize on this. Okay. So we go next one. Oh, bahagian A done already. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, we done already bahagian A. Okay, guys. So all the bahagian A, first part and second part, we already done already. First part video, I already uploaded in my channel. Okay, so this is for bahagian A. Okay, so you can see over here, some cadangan lah they give you. A bit of suggestion on bahagian A. So you must do a lot of latihan. Okay, let me see important point here. Huh? Hmm, okay, dah. Menggunakan nombor perpuluhan betul sekurang-kurangnya empat angka berarti. Okay, guys, you must use decimal places. Huh? At least four significant four significant figure okay at least four sf in your answers okay especially for probability lah okay and then uh for angka berarti again for degrees always use two tempat perpuluhan okay two decimal places for angles okay and then make sure you write out the units kalau soalan tu melibatkan unit if the question involves unit you must state the unit clearly like rm like second Okay, and then refer to the formula list. It'll help you a lot. And then uh, make sure you all know that seterusnya means refer to the previous question, the hands. Okay, and then uh, gariskan kata kunci. Okay, so yeah, basically that's it. Okay, so now we go to bagian B, section B of paper one. Okay, guys. So over here, I'm going to give you a choice. You are All of you are going to choose which question you want to do over here. So I can actually give you a chance to see the question. Lepas tu kamu cuba pilih yang mana kamu suka. Okay, this is the first question. I'll discuss only two out of three. Because dalam exam sebenar kamu hanya perlu jawab dua daripada tiga soalan. Only two out of three question you need to answer in admit. Okay, so first question is on function. Second question is on indices third and log. Third question on three go. Okay, which question you guys like? Can you tell me the number? Cuba type kat saya. Dua soalan yang kamu pilih. Antara 13, 14, 15. Just tell me the number of the question. Like 13 and 14 or 14, 15 or 13, 15. You got three combination lah. You all can choose. 14, 15. I see majority. Huh? Okay, majority say 14, 15. Okay, so we discuss 14, 15. Okay, so 14 is... Uh, indices, set and lock. Okay, this one. Okay, this actual SPM, uh, guys. The actual question that came out. Okay. So, this one, diagram shows a triangle. I think this one shouldn't be that hard for you. Tak begitu susah. So, what concept can we relate here, guys? Can you tell me? What is the concept kita perlu guna untuk cari nilai X? Yes, very good. Whenever you see a right angle marked over here, Bila nampak saja sudut tegak, you must think of Pythagoras theorem, which is this first line over here. Garis pertama tu menggambarkan theorem Pythagoras. So you take the square of the length of both sides. Kamu kuasa dua ke dua-dua panjang dan ketinggian segitiga ini bagi dia sama dengan hypotenuse square. Okay, after this is all your indices knowledge. Your indices must be strong. Okay, so like this one, 2 power x plus 1 square. When you simplify, you will get like this. Okay, kamu akan dapat bentuk macam ni. Okay, so how you actually get this, I can explain a bit over here. Okay, so this one, if you basically you square it, uh, you will get 4 and then x plus 1, you times with 2. So you will get 2x plus 2. Okay, kamu akan dapat 2x tambah 2. And then you simplify further, 4 is 2 square. And then 2x plus 2. Okay, like this. And then kamu tahu 2 square is, uh, wait, uh, 2 square is 4. And then 2x plus 2. Okay, so then you must, wait, uh, let me think and see this one. Mm, guys, this one over here, 
Actually, if you don't want lah, you don't need to write in this format also. Kamu tak perlu tulis dalam format macam ni. If you want to make it easier, you can actually uh, leave it like this. Also can. No need to go that complex. Okay, to make your life easier lah, basically. Okay, so that not so complicated for you lah. Because at the end, kamu tak perlu ikut macam ni sebulat-bulat. You don't need to follow this exactly. Why? Because we can always make an assumption. Let 2x equals to a variable like a. Kamu boleh buat anggapan macam ni. Bial dua kuasa x sama dengan a. So all the two power x right here, you see. You replace it with a random variable. Sesuatu uh, pemboleh ubah yang kamu tak tahu like a. So that you can form quadratic equation. Ungkapan quadratic is much easier. Like this over here. Uh, let's say at this part lah. Okay, kalau kamu nak tukar kepada asas dua pun boleh. Like over here, right? Dari sini, kalau saya sambung, if I continue, you will get 2 power 4x plus 4. Kalau saya expand lah dalam. Okay, and then from here, you can actually get the 2 power 2x. You just separate only. Pisahkan sahaja. Okay, then times 2 power 4. Okay, so then you get also lah the 2 power x. Then you bracket 4. Macam ni kamu tulis. Okay guys. So can you understand this? This way if you understand you can also use. Tapi sikit susah lah. A bit more difficult. Okay lah guys. This question. Boleh faham? But this one not possible lah guys. Nilai ni tak boleh diterima. Rejected. Because you will get uh, undefined. Okay. If this kind of question lah guys. What kind of? How do you find X? Let me ask you. Macam mana nak cari X kalau macam ni? What do we have to apply over here? What concept? What is the thing you learn we must use to solve for X over here? Macam mana nak cari nilai X kat sini? This one. Uh, not really. But what is the concept? Imaginary number is square root negative 1, Tiran. Nombor imaginasi tu uh, datang dari punca kuasa 2 negatif 1. Uh, so it's not imaginary. So what is the concept here guys? How to find X over here for this part I circle? How to find X? What is the concept? Yes, correct. Logarithm. Betul. You must use log to uh, find the X. So can I ask you guys, log 0, what is the value? Apa nilai you dapat when you say log 0? You sure uh, one? If one means we can find the value of x already. Yes, very good. Ever. Jawapan dia adalah ever. Okay, you will get an ever for this question. Okay, means that kamu tak boleh cari nilai x. Means that this is rejected. So you take the other solution where x is one. Okay, kamu ambil satu lagi penyelesaian. Okay guys, do you get this question? Boleh faham? Okay, uh, so we go next one. Okay, so this one, not really, you can go too slowly. Okay, next part is about search. Now they test you about bahagian search. Okay, so they given the area of the trapezium is this one. Mereka dah bagi luas trapezium. So you just need to apply the formula again for trapezium. 1 over 2 times sum of 2 parallel line times with height. Okay, setengah kali 2 garis yang selari hasil tambah dia. Darab dengan ketinggian. So you get this one. This whole equation over here. So your goal, madlamat kamu adalah untuk dapat dalam bentuk ni. You must find a way to get your answer like this. Okay? So you can do a bit of cross multiplication over here. Silang pangka. You will get this one. Kaida silang pangka. You get this answer. And then you simplify a bit. Kamu boleh pindah yang ni kat sini. Shift this one to the left hand, to the right hand side of the equation. Pindah ke sebelah kanan. Okay, so once you get like this, can I ask you guys how to get to the answer? What is the concept here? When you got 5 plus 7 at the denominator over here. Kalau ada set kat bawah pecahan, what do we do? Yes, very good. Conjugate set. Okay, you must use conjugate set. This one form 4 will know. Huh? So form 4 so can learn this part. Okay, so kita akan guna aplikasi set conjugate over here. So you, what is the conjugate set here guys? Can you tell me? What do I have to multiply over here? They actually didn't show the step here. Mereka terus pergi kepada yang ni. Because you only get 4 mark total over here. 
as you can see okay so what is the conjugate third year can you guys tell me times what yes very good uh, yen chi plus become minus five minus third seven correct okay and then kamu kena bahagi dengan nombor sama also you must divide with the same number five minus third seven because whenever you modify an equation nilai yang kamu tambah tu it must be one so that you don't change the original equation tak ubah bentuk persamaan asal Okay, so after you do this, you just need to do your quadratic again. You just do the quadratic expansion, top and bottom. Okay, ulang sahaja. Then you should be able to get in this format already. Okay, you can compare with this one over here. You got the correct answer already. Okay, guys, are you clear for 14B? Boleh faham? Any question, please ask, ah. Huh? Okay, uh, so no question means I proceed. So next one. Okay. Ah, guys, three go, guys. Wake up, guys. Wake up, wake up. This topic, uh, your fear topic in Edmets, topic paling di Garuni, trigonometry. Come. I think a lot of people wanted this, right? Now I'm going to discuss this question with you all. Okay. So let's see together uh, this question. Okay, so they say given that sine x equals to t, such that x is an acute angle, then they ask you to express sine 2x. Okay, guys, whenever they give you question like this, uh, bila kamu nampak saja soalan macam ni, terus lukis the segi tiga. Straight away draw out this triangle because it will always be a right angle triangle. Okay, bila kamu nampak sine x sama dengan t, tak boleh apa-apa jenis segi tiga yang lain. It's always a segi tiga sudut tegak, right angle triangle. So you can know that how to get t, guys? Can you tell me? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So may I know the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse? Apa nisbah? Dia. Nisbah bertentangan bahagi dengan hypotenuse. If you get a value of t. So what can be the possible ratio over here? In other words, I'm asking you the fraction. Lah, saya nak pecahan dia macam mana. Yeah, correct. T over 1. Because when you take T over 1, you get T. Kamu akan dapat jawapan. So you can see over here. T, 1. This one is opposite, bertentangan. This one is hypotenuse. Okay, panjang, the longest side in a triangle is called hypotenuse. CC paling panjang. Okay, and then now they ask you to express sine to X. Okay, mereka nak kamu suruh ungkapkan yang ni. Okay, so you must understand uh, what is the formula lah for sine 2x? Kamu kena tahu. This one actually provided lah guys. So no need to remember. You can find it in the front page of your formula list. Okay, bagian paling depan kertas tu. Sine 2x is actually 2 sine x cos x. Okay, and after that you just substitute the info only. Cos x ni kamu perlu cari lah. Sebab CC bersebelahan. The adjacent side. You must find using Pythagoras theorem. You take 1 square minus t square. Lepas tu punca kuasa dua kan dia. Square root the answer. You will get this answer. Okay guys, do you get 15A? Understand or not? Faham? This one I need your response huh? because this one, this topic difficult. So I need to know whether you all get it or not. Okay, huh? so 15A, okay. So now we go 15B. Okay, so now they talk about cos. Cos theta is K. And they give you a condition for theta. Okay, guys, when they give like this, can I ask you, what quadrant is this? Quadrant ke berapa uh, sudut ni terletak? Yes, very good, fourth quadrant. Okay, you must be familiar with this quadrant. Okay, this is the easy method. All signs, teacher, crazy. Okay, all positive. Maksudnya sin kostan kat sini positive. Kat sini sin sahaja positive. Kat sini tangent sahaja positive. Kat sini, only cos is positive. Okay, means the rest is negative lah, basically. So, you can see over here, in quadrant keempat, you see you get a positive value, which is k. Okay, means that k should be positive lah. Okay, so now we uh, look a bit over here. 
So they want you to express cost half theta. Okay, not cost theta anymore. Now they want half theta. So how are you going to express actually cost half theta? You can actually take a look at your formula list again. Yeah, half angle formula. Okay, but you don't need to use it directly. Kamu boleh guna yang ni dulu. Start with this one. Okay, kamu tak ambil mana-mana formula dengan sign lah. Don't choose the one with sign because they want to express cost. Okay, so you take the second one. Okay, there are three possibility, but you take the second one. Okay, because you can modify the formula a bit. Kamu boleh buat pengubah suayan. So can I ask you guys, from this step to this step, what do they do over here? What is the step they use over here? Apa langkah dia? If you realize and see lah. What do they actually modify over here? What is the changes guys you can see? Apa perubahan boleh nampak in the arrow I show over here? Yes, very good. Divide the angle. Don't don't divide the whole equation by 2, ah, guys. Jangan bagi seluruh persamaan dengan 2. You can see over here, minus 1 still maintain as minus 1. But only the angle, you divide by 2. You can see the 2 still maintain here. So you don't divide the whole equation with 2. Only the angle. Hanya sudut sahaja bagi 2. Okay, so when you take cos 2 theta, divide by 2, you will get k lah. Because cos theta is k. So kamu boleh gantikan k. And then this one, theta also, you divide by 2. Okay, then from here, uh, you look back at the question, they want cos half theta. So you try to rearrange. Cuba dapat cos half theta on the left-hand side and the other terms on the right-hand side. Okay, so you can see how they modify over here lah. Cos square means square root lah. Bila kamu pindahkan kuasa 2 tu. When you shift the square, means it becomes square root. Okay, whenever you have square root, uh, guys, Remember, positive, negative. Okay? You must put positive and negative. Ada dua possibility. Okay? So now you see. Ah, guys, this is a trap. Huh? Because this one, the value they give here is theta. But now you must remember, huh? kamu kena ingat, the value you're using over here, nilai yang kamu guna is actually theta over 2. Okay? So you must also divide the angle in the range. Setiap sudut yang diberi tu dalam jula tu kena bahagi dua. You must divide by two. Okay, so now you can see why the final answer they take the negative value. Because in the third quadrant, untuk yang ni, this specified angle over here, dalam jula ni, cos will be negative. Nilai cos negative. Sebab tangent sahaja positive. Only tangent is positive. So this is the answer. Can you get it guys? Understand or not? Because over here, it must be a negative value, less than zero. Because your angle already divided by two. This one, the range is given for theta only. But now they want to find theta over two. Because you got this expression over here. Remember, they ask you to express cos half theta in terms of k. But you have positive, negative here. So you're not decided yet. Kamu tak tentu. Sama ada kena ambil positive atau negative. So you have to base on the angle. Yeah. Because the quadrant changed from here to here. Okay, 135 to 180, if you all realize, is quadrant 3. Quadrant 3, cosine is negative. Ah, okay, so you must divide the angle. If you maintain in quadrant 4, you will put positive over here. But same value. Okay, magnitude dia masih sama, but the symbol is different. Positive and negative symbol. Okay, so are you guys okay? Question B. So we go to question C, yeah? Okay, wait, is it over here? Okay, this one. Okay, find the value of tangent 22.5 in third form. This one is a very good question, guys. Salah satu soalan yang bagus. So, we guna sukuan lang untuk tentukan it positive or negative. Uh, sukuan maksud kamu, Andy, what do you mean by sukuan? You mean the quadrant lah. Kamu maksudkan quadrant. I think sukuan is 1 over 4, right? Means you're talking about quadrant lah. The, yeah, the term is quadrant, okay? So, uh, okay guys. This one lah, guys. Don't be smart lah. Jangan terlalu pandai. You say to yourself, I just press calculator lah. I already get the answer. What for want to do all this working? Do you guys have this thought lah? I can straight away press calculator. I get the answer. Di, find the value. Any of you thinking like this? Can you guys tell me? Okay, no, uh, this is the wrong thought. Uh. I wish I could. 
that one that kind of question ah you must look at the mark if one mark then good you can do like that but this is not one mark it's four mark not just pressing calculator you can get four mark that is very easy isn't one three five to one oh wait ah huh? oh yeah yeah Chevelyn thank you correct guys one three five to one eighty actually here sudut dalam kuadran yang ni but still negative lah for cosine sorry ah guys correction Quadrant ketiga is 180 to 270. Quadrant kedua is 90 to 180. Means this one, this value over here is in quadrant 2. Ah, but still same lah, still negative value for cos. Because sine is only positive in quadrant 2. Okay, so we go question C. Ah. Thank you, ah, Chevelyn, for the correction. Okay, so now... You must think, uh, guys, tangent 22.5. Tangent, you only have one formula given to you in the formula list. Kalau kamu tengok lah, betul-betul. Hanya satu formula saja boleh guna untuk tangent. So, you must think, 22.5, guys. Kalau saya darab dengan 2, I will actually get 45. I will get 45. So, you can actually guna formula yang ni. Okay, because this one is tangent A. Yang ni tangent A saja. But now, I want to use tangent 2A. Jadi, kena gandakan uh, sudut tu dengan 2. You must multiply the angle by 2. Okay, so you will get something like this. Kat sebelah kanan. Kamu gantikan saja nilai A sama dengan 22.5. Just substitute inside. Okay, then you can press the calculator. Kat sini boleh tekan. Tangent 45, what do you guys get? You will get 1 if you press calculator. Okay. So you can just substitute over here, kat sini. Okay, and then uh, they say this one over here. Wait, uh, let me see. 2T. I think this one, how they get the T is related to the previous question over here. Based on the triangle just now, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check and see. Uh. Wait, tangent 22.5. How they can't the T over there? Why times 2? Because the angle and D. Here we're using double angle formula. Okay, I think you heard of this tangent to A. So this value, 22.5, is only the A. So when you use the formula, you need to times 22.5 with 2. Darab 22.52 dengan 2. But then inside here, if you see the formula, is only A. So you take back the value in the question. Ambil balik nilai dalam soalan, 22.5. Do you get it, Andy? Yeah, yeah, it's the formula given to you in the exam. You can flip to the front of the exam page. You will get this formula over here. This red one. Okay, that's the tangent formula. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking. How they get the tangent 22.5 is T over here? Because got no info given over here. Mm. Wait, now, let me see, uh, guys, this one. Square they let ten ah yeah 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 correct correct yeah thank you uh ji siang okay they actually let tangent 22.5 is t because they want you to find the value of this one make an kamu cari nilai yang ni but since it's you will get like a decimal answer kamu akan dapat dalam jawapan perpuluhan so you make it equals to t so can you see ah uh, guys just now i told you all earlier you will form always a quadratic equation in Trigo. So this is the example. Kamu akan bentuk persamaan quadratic. Andy, this is what I mean. Okay. So over here, kamu tak boleh buat pemfaktoran mudah, sadly. You cannot do simple factorization if you press the calculator. Oh, really? Yeah? Taman Bukit Malui. Who lah? Jie Siang lah. Oh, Siang Jie or whatever. Okay, yeah. Wow, nice lah. At least you invite him. Good. First time I join. Okay, so you just use the quadratic formula over here lah. You apply your A is 1, B is 2, C is negative 1. Kamu gantikan sahaja in the quadratic formula. Just substitute only. Then you will get the... Uh, Tiran, good question. You actually cannot factorize normally because you have decimal places. Kamu ada titik perpuluhan. So the normal factorization cannot work. 
you can only use quadratic formula here okay you won't get an exact value if you press tangent 22.5 in your calculator you will get 0 0.414213 something like that so there is no exact value tada nilai tepat okay so you must use quadratic formula so after you do all this you should be able to solve lah kamu boleh selesaikan dah and then you will get the answer okay but you must take note kamu kena ambil nilai yang positif you must take your answer as positif Okay, because 22.5 lie in the first quadrant. Sudut tu dalam quadrant pertama. Quadrant pertama, tangent adalah positif. Okay, tangent is positif in first quadrant, yes. So, you will take this value. Okay, I think they simplify a bit lah. Mereka permudahkan yang ni. Okay, you can simplify guys. Third 8, you can actually change it to third 4 plus third 2, which is 2 third 2. Okay, kamu kena mahir lah, bab third kat sini. Although in Trigo, your third chapter must be uh, strong. Because first quadrant and the 22.5 degree sudut dia dalam quadrant pertama. Okay, first quadrant is from 0 to 90. Uh, so 22.5 is in the range lah dalam julat 2. Okay, so if you simplify, kalau kamu nak lah, you can leave your answer as this also, no problem. But usually dalam mathematics tambahan, we always encourage to give in the simplest form bagi dalam jawapan termudah okay so if you can simplify uh, sebaik-baiknya permudahkan lah just simplify it okay because you can see over here you see the final mark ah uh, they give you if you simplify only kalau kamu stop kat sini you stop your working over here you get three out of four mark if you refer this marking over here lah okay so the one more mark come from your simplify okay guys are you clear Semua boleh faham tentang soalan trigo ni? Okay, good. Okay, so for bahagian B, uh, same thing. Nothing new over here. Okay, so yeah. We done already paper 1 guys. Kita dah habis kertas 1 teknik. Okay, so now we shall go to paper 2. Okay, so now we go to teknik for paper 2. Eh, sorry. Okay. Okay, so paper 2, okay, I start with the briefing lah a bit. Okay, so paper 2 ah guys, paper 2 actually is one of your life savior in NMAX. Salah satu penyelamat kamu dalam matematik tambahan. Why ah? Because it's actually 100 mark in total. 100 mark ni banyak ah guys. A lot of marks to gain over here. Let's say lah you, your paper 1 come out very hard in SPM. Datang sangat susah dalam SPM. Paper 2 will come senang. Don't worry one. They'll always adjust the standard. Let's say paper 1 sangat-sangat susah. They'll bring down the standard for paper 2 so that you all can score more mark over here. Okay? That's how they adjust. Okay? So, guys, fun fact I want to tell you. You all want to listen ah, my story. Cerita saya tentang yang ni. About paper 2, of course. Okay. Do you guys believe uh, me if I said I scored actually this 100 mark? In my media exam in form 5. Saya dapat 100 per 100 for my paper 2. Not one mark lose also. 100 over 100 paper 2. I get for my media exam. Not surprise. <laughs> okay lah. Not surprise. Never mind. I just tell you all lah. To show that it's actually possible. Boleh berlaku. You can get full marks one. If you really focus and do no careless mistake. You can get 100 marks one. Not impossible this one. Paper 1 lebih susah, but paper 2 can one if you really do well lah. Okay, so uh, next one we talk about section A, okay, total 50 marks. So guys, over here, which section do you all want to start with? Yeah, more straightforward. Bagian mana you all feel like want to start first, A, B or C? Because you have 2 hours 30 minutes here. Kamu ada 2 jam 30 minutes. So what do you guys think? Okay, good. Yeah, you can start with section B, can? Kamu boleh mula dengan uh, bahagian B dulu. Okay, because this is optional question. Okay, you just have to choose three. Okay, and then section C, empat soalan ini kamu semua tahu dah. You know what is going to come out, right? SOT, index number, linear programming, kinematics. Okay, these are the four questions over here. Section B boleh berubah sikit. Section B, the question that come out can change a bit. Okay, but saya akan bagi tahu lah. A few popular one in section B, kamu selalu akan nampak adalah linear law. 
Okay, yeah, section C fix one, it won't change. Takan Bauba. Okay, section B, a famous one is linear law. And also vector, vector famous, section B. Lagi sa boleh kata differentiation integration also can come out here. Okay? <laughs> yeah, they choose the easy one lah for section C. That's why uh, guys, section B and C, I always advise you guys, cuba dapat sepenuh-penuh marka yang mungkin. Over 50 mark here, try to score at least 45, 45. Because this kind of question actually... If you know the format of how it come out, the pattern, kalau kamu dah tahu pola dia, you can actually score a lot of mark over here. Okay, section A bergantung lah. Because sometimes can have hard question over here. So, macam soalan buktikan, proving all that. So, yeah, it really depends. Okay, so we go next one lah. So, tips before exam. Uh, this one I know you to say lah. I'm sure you all, you all do it, right? Doa, all that. Okay, so basic maths, must master your algebra, factorization, all that. Okay, and also use the formula list given. Selalu guna rumus yang diberikan. Okay, it'll help you a lot. Okay, so next one. Okay, so these are all the formula given over here. Okay, in your paper too. Semua rumus yang diberikan kat kamu. Okay, so guys, can you tell me, uh, this one is what? Apa yang ni? This one used for what? Yang saya tengah circle. Yes, probability distribution. Because usually, uh, topic ni akan keluar kat bahagian B juga. They like to ask tabuan kebang kalian probability sex, uh, distribution in section B paper 2. Okay, so kalau kamu nampak yang ni, if you see this uh, clearly, I think this is an old version lah. Salah satu versi lama, they actually have an updated version of this. So can I ask you guys, uh, this part yang saya tengah gerakkan ke sir, the one I move my mouse. What does this represent actually? Z what and D? No, what do you mean by Z? There is a term for it, this one. This part over here. Katsini dan Katsini. Yes, very good. Z score. Ataupun score Z. Okay, this one is over here. How about the content guys inside here? Dalam jadual ni, semua nombor ni mewakili apa? What does all the num this number represent? What does it represent, guys, inside here, all this? All this value. Yes, correct. Probability. Okay. Kebang kalian. All the value over here is the probability. Okay. So, we go next one, huh? Okay, so during examination, make sure you follow the instruction. Okay, paper 2 especially, kertas 2, mereka selalu akan tanya macam ni. Give your answer in term of pi. Berikan jawapan dalam bentuk pi. Like for integration, bab pengameran. And also vectors. Okay, bab vector, they always like to ask, express this in terms of what? Okay, I rasa kalau kamu buat latihan, kamu tahulah apa yang saya maksudkan. Okay, especially this one. Okay. And then, okay, this one nothing. So we go next one. Okay, do the easy question first. Index number, okay? You can see all the easy topic over here. Okay, linear law, coordinate geometry, SOT. Okay, simultaneous. Graph of Trigo. Uh, I don't know why they actually tell it under easy questions. I tak tahu mengapa mereka letak yang ni di bawah senang. Mungkin boleh lah, boleh kata senang. Because you just... Ah, that's why I was thinking. Circular measure. Never mind lah guys. This is just general tips only. Tips um. Okay, don't spend too much time on one question. Okay. Uh, okay, all these general tips. Okay, so next. Give the answer. Ah. I always emphasize. Bentuk termudah. Simplest form. You can see the example just now on the Trigo question in paper 1. Okay, give your answer in simplest form. Okay, decimal places. Angle in degree. All these two decimal. Linear law, ah, guys. Bila mereka suruh cari pemala, find the value of the constant, give in 2 dp also. Okay, 2 titik per bulan. Okay, 2 titik per bulan can mean 3 SF or 4 SF lah. Usually, 3 angka berarti atau 4 angka berarti. Okay, and then area, length, height, angle in radian, 4 decimal place. 4 titik per bulan. Probability distribution, 4 SF. Four significant figure, empat angka berarti. Follow the question. Ah, if the question specifically mentioned to you, kalau soal nyatakan, kamu patuhi lah. What do they want you to live in? Okay. 
So next one. Okay, so now we come to the first question. Okay, guys, this one your favorite question, right, guys? Soalan paling senang. Solve the following simultaneous. This one, uh, guys, one mark also cannot lose. Huh? Satu marka pun tak boleh hilang kat sini. Very precious question, this one. Sangat berharga to save you. Because this one, I think, is eight marks total, if I'm not mistaken. One, two. Kat sini mereka letak lima kot sahaja. I think only five mark over here. Okay. Yeah, takes a lot of time. But if you can get the answer, then good lah. Okay, so you can see over here. Can I ask you guys? Kat sini mereka guna kaedah penghapusan atau penggantian. Which method do they use over here? Elimination or substitution? Yes, very good. Elimination. You can see over here. Eliminate Z. Okay, mereka hapuskan Z. So you can see over here. They choose any two equation to eliminate the Z. Okay, so tinggal jawapan dalam X dan Y saja. Only left in X and Y term. Okay, and then you just add both equation to eliminate one more. So over here, kamu boleh nampak, they eliminate the Y. Okay, hapuskan Y. So then you can find your X already. Lepas tu buat penggantian saja. Just substitute X inside number 6 or 5. Gantikan dalam mana-mana 1, 4 atau 6. Kamu akan dapat jawapan Y. Y is 4. And then substitute X is 1 over 2 and Y is 4. Kat mana-mana dalam 3 ini. Any one of the three equation. Then you get Z. Okay guys, are you clear? Question number 1. Any question you guys have? No. Okay, this one quite straightforward lah. I think sangat uh, senang nak buat yang ni. Okay, so next one. Okay, this one is log. Okay, second question. Indices third and log. Okay, so first question now, guys. They ask you, is third 0.25 a third? You guys know uh, how to answer this. Kalau soalan macam ni keluar. This is a fact question. Uh. Soalan fakta. Yeah, no. Okay, because you will get an exact value. Kamu boleh permudahkan. So you can show like this. You will get 0.5. Okay. Because it can be simplified into 1 over 2. Boleh dipermudahkan kepada 1 per 2. So anything that can be simplified, boleh dipermudahkan, is not a third lah. Okay. So ini adalah jawapan dia. Rational number. Uh, yeah, it can be called as a rational number. Can. Okay. Most of the number are rational number lah. Kebanyakan nombor 2 adalah nombor uh, rational is what? I'm BM. Never mind lah. So okay, rational number. Okay, so next one, part B. Uh, okay, uh, this one, you see, the reason over here salah for the calon sederhana, average student, because he give wrong reason, recurring or repeating decimal. You can see over here, guys, tadar titik perpuluhan yang berulang pun. There is no recurring decimal. So this is wrong lah. Real reason is here and D. As it can be simplified into 1 over 2. Boleh dipermudahkan kepada satu per dua. That is the key point. Okay. So this is the characteristic lah of set. Ciwi-ciwi sesuatu set. Okay, so next one. About log. The question is here actually. Ah, guys, proving. You see, the idea ask you. Soalan buktikan. Proof that log AB is log CB over log CA. Okay, this one not that difficult to prove. Tak begitu susah nak buktikan. So you can see over here actually. Okay, you must make an assumption. Biar log AB sama dengan X. Let log AB equals to a random term called X. Okay, then you convert from log form to index form. Guys, do you know how to do the conversion? Ah? Kamu semua sedar tak macam mana nak buat tukar dari bentuk log ke index? Do you guys have problem on that? Can anyone tell me? Converting log form to index form. If no, say no, ah, so that I know. Any problem over here? Convert log form to index form. Okay, no problem, ah, guys. So, kita teruskan. So, this one, you will get B equals A power X over here. Okay? And then uh, you will get log A, B, log C, B equals X log C, A. Kamu tambah asas baru kat sini. You add a new base of log. Okay. So uh, you will get something like this lah. Then kamu boleh uh, pindahkan. You just shift the equation. 
substitute x is log cb okay then you will get the answer already okay so this is actually how we prove it lah over here kita tambah log c from here to here we just add log c on both side of the equation tambah log c ka dua dua belah persamaan lepas tu susun saja just rearrange the equation okay guys are you clear with the proving can ah if they ask you in this question in this exam can you all do soalan buktikan guys can or not don't sleep over there i must be active to respond <laughs> okay next one okay so now they ask you this question part 2 express log 3h plus log 9k as a single log in base 3 okay guys can i ask you what is your step over here apa langkah pertama kamu when you see this kind of log how can i modify it Before I show you the answer, lah, I want you all to think of the idea. Others also try to give suggestion. Huh? You all must try. Yes, very good. Tuka asas, correct. Change the base of log 9k. Okay, you can change log 9k by adding base 3. Kamu tambah asas 3 kepada log 9k. So you will get log 3k bahagi dengan log 39. So can I ask you guys? What is the value of log 39? Can you all tell me? Yang ni ada nilai yang tetap. You will get an exact answer. Log 39. Yes, very good. Your answer will be 2. Okay, because 9 is 3 square. Kuasa boleh pindah depan. You shift the power 2 in front. Become 2 log 33, which is 2. Okay, so you can see the working over here. You should be able to get it already. Uh, okay, over here. So you see, when you get 2 at the bottom, kamu darab seluruh persamaan ini dengan 2 times the whole equation by 2. Okay, so you will get something like this lah. Okay, you will get like this. If you don't want to times by 2 also can. Kalau kamu tak mau ubah seluruh yang 2, you just leave it like that also can. So you shift the power back on top. Kamu pindahkan kuasa ini ke atas. So you get third K. So then when plus... 2 log of the same base, bila kamu tambah log asas sama, you can combine, become times, log 3 HK, H third K, sorry. Okay, so are you guys okay with question 2? Kita dah habis, soalan 2. Any question? Ah? You can see, ah, guys, actually not really difficult one, paper 2. No need to worry, you can see the type of question that come out in SPM. Only some part, it really come difficult. Okay, so I proceed. Huh? Question number three now. Okay, question number three also easy, not difficult. Tak susah about function, topic fungsi, your first chapter in Admax. Okay, so now they ask you to find out gx first. So you have the info over here. So you will get fx is x plus 2. Okay, kamu kena tahu lah baca yang uh, raja anak panah, arrow diagram. Okay, so you will get fx is x plus 2. And then this one, guys, be careful. lah. It is GFX. Don't write FGX. This is a kesilapan lazim. Jangan tulis FGX. Well, kamu ikut macam ni. You must understand that the first function must always be at the most right. Fungsi pertama yang melalui proses pemetaan tu kena kat paling kanan. The most right this thing. So you get GFX. Okay, equal to this value lah. Nilai ni. 3X minus 4. So your question is GX is what? Okay, so you can apply the concept of inverse function over here. Gunakan konsep fungsi song-sang untuk hapuskan fungsi f. You eliminate the function f by adding a inverse function of f. So you need to find out lah what is the inverse function of f. Kamu kena cari fungsi song-sang f. So, I, so you guys know ah, how to find inverse function. Are you guys clear with the concept? Cara nak tukar fungsi biasa ke fungsi song-sang. Okay, huh? so this one I think should be no problem. Lah. You just do this concept. And then you can find GX already, no problem. So you substitute the X with the X minus 2 over here. Kamu gantikan saja because you have GF F inverse X. Okay, so your whole of F inverse X become your X now. 
Here is the same thing. So that's why I can substitute like this. Then you will get your answer already. Okay, so we go B part B. Yeah? Now they ask you to find F square X. So can I ask you guys, F square X, what type of function is it? Apa jenis fungsi for F square X? Yeah, it's also known as a composite function. Composite function don't mean that it must be two different letters, huh, guys. Tak semestinya kena dua huruf berbeza. Even though it's the same alphabet, huruf F masih dikategorikan bawa fungsi gubahan. Composite function. Okay, because you are doubling it. Buat dua kali. Whenever you have more than one time, it's called composite function. No matter what the letter. Okay, tak kira huruf dia apa, dia masih fungsi gubahan. Kalau nampak kuasa dia lebih dari satu. Okay, so I think this one should be no problem. You should be able to do lah composite function of this. So you just substitute only x plus 2. And then inside the x, kamu gantikan yang ni kat sini. And then plus 2. Jangan lupa guys, you must plus 2 also at the end. So you get x plus 4. Okay, so now the challenge is number 2. Can I ask you guys, f power nx, what do we call this? What is, apa uh, nama kita bagi untuk fungsi macam ni? F power nx. When they put an n over there, what does it mean? Bila kamu nampak huruf n. Anyone? Just try only, don't worry. Cuba saja. What do they mean by the n over there? Uh, yes, but more specific. Uh, Yanchi close. Ah, yes, correct. Keberapa? That is the correct word. Okay, the n term. Kalau kamu pernah dengar sebutan ke n, this is the meaning. Okay, this is general formula. Mereka nak kamu construct bina satu formula am bagi hubungan yang ni. Form a general formula for this relationship. Okay, so how you can form general formula? Very easy. Kamu cari F kuasa 3X. Usually, uh, guys, we will need to have three pattern, at least three. Kamu boleh nampak kat sini. Fx, F kuasa 2X, F kuasa 3X. At least three pattern to form a general formula. Untuk bentuk formula am. Um. So, you have to find out one more first. Just to confirm, untuk mengesahkan pola ni berulang ke tak. Does it continue or not? So, you can see over here, kamu dapat F kuasa 3X, F cube X is X plus 6. So, can you guys see the pattern? 2, 4, 6. So, this is why I give 2N over here. Symbol dia 2N. Okay, so can you guys tell me, uh, what is the N value? Apa nilai N kat sini? Uh, totally given, not only one, for all the terms. How do we write out? Yes, 1, 2, 3. N boleh sama dengan 1, 2, 3. Because you can see over here. Here, N is 1, N is 2, N is 3. So this is how you get the general formula. Okay, guys, are you clear for question number three? Boleh faham? Soalan ketiga. Okay, so we go next one. Okay, next one is about quadratic. Question four. Okay, still about form four. You can see, yeah, guys, a lot of form four topic actually come in paper two. Banyak topic tingkatan empat. Already three now out of uh, four question. Okay. So, this one, they ask you to find the value of K. Cari nilai K. Okay, so what is the method you all can think over here? You can see that one of the point over here, salah satu titik. This coordinate is actually known as the y-intercept, pintasan y. Okay, so you will get uh, the K value, kamu boleh cari lah. Kamu gantikan saja. X sama dengan kosong, Y sama dengan lima. Y tu adalah Fx. Y is your Fx value. So when x is 0, y is 5, you find out your k value. Cari nilai k. You will get negative 4. Okay? So I think this question should be okay lah with you guys. Okay, so now for part B. Can you guys tell me uh, an idea? Macam mana nak cari nilai m kat sini? How do I find the m value over here? Can you all give me some suggestion? Cadangan. Use the B square minus 4AC formula. Yes, can, correct. Okay, you can use that formula if you want also. 
So let me see uh, what they use over here first. Okay, so for part B, they use a different concept, maker guna concept berlainan, but still can also. So over here, they basically trying to say uh, the SOR and POR formula, maker guna yang ni, kedua-dua formula. Maker cuba bandingkan SOR bagi fungsi fx, the sum of roots of function x, hasil tambah punca dia untuk fx, dan juga hasil tambah punca gx. Why guys, can you see ya? Both graph actually have the same root. Kedua-dua graph ni mempunyai punca sama. Maksudnya, means that uh, both graph will also have the same sum of roots lah. Kedua-dua graph ni ada hasil tambah punca yang sama. Can you guys get this idea? Boleh tak? They will have the same sum of roots because the same point of intersection. Titik persilangan sama. Okay, so this is why I can use this formula over here. So this equation, mereka dah bagi kat kamu, already given. You just substitute, ah, k is negative 5, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check. Ah. Negative 4, sorry. K is negative 4, you just substitute. Lepas tu, kembangkan yang ni. Expand this uh, bracket. Then you compare with this, the SOR formula. SOR sama dengan negative B over A. Kena ingat rumus ini. Okay, this one not provided, huh? so you must memorize this formula. Okay, and then this one, you apply the same thing. Persamaan GX, kamu guna konsep sama. Hasil tambah punca, ND. HTP. Ah, uh, That's the BM term. Okay, so this one, again, apply the same concept. Concept sama, you will get, uh, wait. Oh, sama dengan enam. Make both of these equal to each other because they have the same value. Nilai SOR sama. Jadi, kamu akan dapat persamaan macam ni. So, you can calculate M is 22. Okay, kamu akan dapat jawapan macam ni. Okay, so can I ask you guys, uh, is this the only way to solve this kind of question? Adakah ini salah satu cara sahaja? No. So, can you guys tell me more concept? Uh, how to solve this question? Like Andy say can, yes, one more. There is satu lagi kaedah. Other than that. Try to look at the graph carefully. Cuba lihat graph tu. What other possible solution I can apply over here? If you got no idea, say don't know. Ah. Kalau kamu buntu dah, no idea, just tell don't know to me. I'll explain. Completing the square. Mm, let me think. I think can also. Yeah, boleh. Persamaan serentak. Uh, Andy, persamaan serentak you must realize. You don't have your M value over here. Kamu tak ada nilai M. So it's a bit hard for persamaan serentak. Okay, I hope you get me lah this one. Uh, okay, so one my way ya. Uh, cadangan saya. Kamu cari punca-punca dulu. You find the exact value of the roots for fx equation. Kamu cari punca. You can solve this equation. Okay. Kamu boleh buat pemfaktoran kat sini. Make fx equal to zero. Untuk cari nilai x atau punca dia. Find the roots of x. Okay. You will get, I think, if I'm not mistaken, x is 1 and x is 5. Kalau kamu cuba selesaikan yang ni lah. You will get x value as 1 or 5. Maksudnya satu kat sini. 5 kat sini. Okay, so can I ask you guys, if 1 and 5 are the roots, what is the axis of symmetry over here? Apa persamaan paksi simetri bagi kedua-dua graf ini? Very good, you will get 3. 1 plus 5 divided by 2. Kamu tambah kedua-dua punca bahagi 2. Formula titik tengah, midpoint formula. You plus both root divided by 2. Ah, uh, Bukan vertex, Andy. Kalau vertex, kita guna kaedah PKD. Penyempurnaan kuasa 2 to get in vertex form. But this one I'm not doing vertex. i just finding the roots only. Cari punca persama ni saja. Okay, then I just find the axis of symmetry. 1 plus 5 over 2. Okay, tak guna kaedah PKD pun. We're not using the completing the square method here. Okay, so when you get x is 3, guys, can you recall lah, apa formula untuk persamaan paksi simetri yang pernah kamu belajar? What is the formula have you learned for axis of symmetry all this while? 
Yes, very good. Negatif B over 2A. Itu jawapan dia. So, negatif B over 2A akan sama dengan nilai 3 lah yang kamu dapat. Okay, and your negative B, kamu ada nilai kat sini, M minus 4. Nilai A adalah negative 3, so you can solve already for M. Kamu boleh cari dah. So this is another method I have to share. Salah satu lagi penyelesaian. Okay, so which is the best method? Mana yang paling baik? Actually, no really best method one. All are accepted. Semua diterima. Asalkan ada uh, logic yang kukul lah. It has a strong supporting point. Okay, so you still should be able to get M is 22. Okay, guys, can you get it? Soalan B1, boleh faham tak? Okay, so we go B2 now. Okay, guys, whenever they mention by using this method, ah, mereka kata kaedah specific dah, no other choice. You have to find out using this method. Okay, if form 5, you will know that maximum point, guys. What other method can I use to find maximum point? Apa lagi kaedah untuk cari titik maksimum kalau kamu form 5? What knowledge can we apply here? Yes, very good. Pembezaan kali kedua. Okay, you can use the second derivative to find out max point. Okay, but over here, boleh ke kamu guna kaedah tu? Can I use that method? Kena patuhi awan soalan. They say cannot already. Okay, so they restrict you. Kat sini mereka bagi halangan. You must only use this method. Okay, because yang ni mereka uji tentang bab kuadratik, bukan bab pembezaan. Okay, you'll follow the topic one. So you cannot jump. Tak boleh lompat sini dan sana. So they'll specify the method for you. Okay, so you must use it lah. Yang ni kamu akan dapat dalam bentuk vertex. Get it in vertex form. So again, I think you all know the step, right? Intensive that day saya dah bincang tentang bab ni secara detail. That day intensive on quadratic. Okay, so you must make sure the coefficient of x square is 1. Per kali x kuasa 2 tu 1. So this is how they do it. Faktorkan negative 3. Take out the negative 3. Okay, and then add b over 2 square minus b over 2 square. Yang ni kamu kena tambah. Lepas nilai ni. After this value. Okay, after that you factorize also this one. Faktorkan. And then expand back. Okay. Buat pengembangan negatif 3 ke semua ungkapan di dalam kurungan. You expand negative 3 to all these terms in the bracket. So you'll get this answer. Okay, and then they ask, not yet complete ah guys, you must answer back the question. Jawab balik soalan. Coordinate of maximum point. So you can notice over here, x is 3 and then y is 12. Means the coordinate is 3, 12. Okay guys, are you clear with question 4? Boleh faham? We done question four already. Okay, so we proceed. Question five. Ah, guys. Steven, this is your question. Three go. Second time. This time in paper two, section A. <laughs> no, no, don't say goodbye. Easy only. Don't worry one. Proving. This one, this proving very short one. You can see over here. Sangat pendek saja. One, two, three, four. Four line. Settle. You get two mark. You see, only two mark, ah, disproving. Kalau lebih panjang, if the soalan buktikan is longer, you'll have more mark. Okay, lebih banyak marka. Okay, so you can actually choose to start from wherever you like lah. Kamu boleh mula dari mana-mana kamu suka sebenarnya. Okay, so you guys think which one is easier? Is it easier to start with left hand side or right hand side? Mana lebih senang? Nak mula dari belah kiri ke belah kanan? Actually, both also can one, guys. Okay, right means, kalau kamu mula from the right, you read this from down to up. Baca ni dari bawah ke atas, kalau kamu pilih right hand side. If left hand side, you read from up to down. That is the difference. Where did sign 2A come from? Uh, Andy, what do you mean? Oh, this one. Uh. Andy, kamu maksudkan yang ni. Oh, this one cot square A, this is the formula. Formula bagi cot square A. Cot square A over sine square A. Okay, guys, maybe I share with you all something lah. This is something I learned also. This one actually, this formula not given to you. Tak diberi dalam kertas exam. So you all must know. So one simple way over here is, I want to introduce a method lah to learn to go easier. You draw a hexagon. Lucky's hexagon. 
Okay, this is a method ah, for you guys. And put number one in the middle. Letak nombor satu tu kat tengah-tengah. This one really useful one ah, guys. Don't play play. This one can be your life savior. But you must remember because it's not given. First one, put sign over here. Then put cos over here. And then put tangent over here. And then put cotangent over here. Cotangent to cot lah, C-O-T. Okay, and then put secant over here, S-E-C. Here, kamu put cosecant. Can you guys get it ah? Yang ni kena hafal, you must memorize this sequence. Till now, okay ah. Can you guys understand how I'm doing this? Okay ah guys. This is the method. Okay ah. So I continue. Then you just draw a few triangles over here. Kamu lukis segi tiga macam ni. Divide this hexagon into a few triangles. Okay, you get this shape. Okay, quite familiar shape lah I think. Three triangle on top, three triangle bottom. Okay, so from here guys, how I get this formula? Macam mana dapat yang ni? You know that tangent is sine over cos, right? I'm sure you're all familiar with this, right? Tangent sama dengan sin per cos. This is one side of the hexagon. But can you see the other side now, guys? Salah satu lagi CC hexagon too. Can you see cot is actually cos divide sine? This is how the formula come. Ini cara formula ni datang. And this, this is your answer. Because tangent is equal to sine over cos, so I follow the same pattern for this side. Cot is equal to cos over sine. Okay, wait, uh, I explain again. Wait, let me rub first. Wait, uh, this one is a technique. The uh, one of the technique I learned lah. To remember easier. Wait, uh, okay. So this one over here, you also you usually will take tangent equals sine divided by cos, right, Andy? You familiar with this formula, right? If you read this way, lah, kamu kena baca macam ni. Guna anak panah macam ni. Whenever you draw the shape, we, uh, draw the arrow like that. Tangent equals sine divided by cos. Okay, this one no mathematics involved, right, Andy? So jangan cuba fikir macam mana persamaan ni terbentuk. This is a way to remember. Cara nak hafal, so you must accept it. Kena terima, there is no maths explanation. Ah, it's not a mathematical method or anything. Okay, ini adalah cara nak hafal. Okay, so can you see cotangent over here? So I can say that cotangent is equal to cos divided by sine. Kamu baca macam ni. So you have two arrows like this. Macam kamu peluk seseorang. You try to hug someone. Guys, you all know how to hug someone. This is the demonstration lah. Kamu akan peluk seseorang macam ni. You take two hands and then hug. Lepas tu tutup kedua-dua tangan macam tu. Can you guys see uh, how to hug a person? Like this, right? You take two hands like this. Ah, so you all remember like this. Cuba ingat macam tu. Whenever you come to this chapter, think about hugging a person. So you must draw this hexagon first lah. Lepas tu boleh nampak. Then you draw the two arrow. Then hug a person. Okay, like you sayang this chapter a lot lah. You just feel like hugging the chapter. But actually, you all don't like this chapter. But just hug lah. The looks aja about me. Okay, so this is how it come actually. So you can see that sine square and sine square saya boleh potong dah. So left with this one. Okay, and then you have the formula over here. This one given to you dalam uh, what apa? Uh, formula list. So you just shift only. Two cos square A, satu ni kamu pindah ke belah kiri. Shift it to left hand side. So already proven lah. One plus cos two A. Okay, so the major part, banyak, banyak calon tak tahu buat adalah bahagian ini. Kalau kamu boleh dapat yang ni, if you get this, the rest very simple already. Semua yang ni senang. Tapi yang ni yang paling susah kat sini. Take note of this ah, guys. This formula especially. Okay, guys, do you understand the proving? Boleh faham tak? Part A1. Others also try to respond ah, yang lain. Okay, yeah. before I go part B. Okay, one datang mana? Andy, from the formula. 
this one given to you that we rumus ni kamu modify dua cos square a kamu kena pindah satu lah kat belah kiri you must shift it to the left so that's why you get one plus okay because they want to find two cos 2a yeah formula juga given to you in the exam this chapter is all about formula guys jadi kena mahir guna rumus yang diberi dan juga kenali rumus yang tak diberi like this this kind of formula not given so you all must understand how to get the formula okay now nah, erase all ink okay now it's better okay so now we go question two ah soalan nombor dua Okay, so they ask in terms of pi, ah, guys, kena bagi jawapan dalam sebutan pi. Okay, guys, so if they give like this, boleh tak saya bagi jawapan dalam daljah? Can I give my answer in degree? If they give the condition like this, keadaan macam ni, can I give it in degree? Yes or no? Yes, no, must give your answer in radian mode, bentuk radian. Okay, so this is the equation you all need to solve. Okay, jadi guys, this question ah, kalau kamu tak boleh buktikan yang ni, if you cannot prove this, never mind, skip to the second question. Skip saja kepada bahagian yang kedua because you can use the answer over here directly. Kamu boleh guna jawapan kat sini, gantikan kat sini. Can you guys see ah, what is happening over here? Kamu gantikan seluruh yang ni dengan yang ni. Okay, just substitute only because you have the answer over here already. Kamu dah ada jawapan kat part A1. So then you just have to solve for A. Kamu kena cari nilai A. Okay, so you will get cos 2A is negative 1 over 2. Ini adalah nilai dia. Okay, but remember guys, they want to find the angle A, sudut A. But here your, your information adalah 2A. Okay, so it's different, berbeza. Okay, but first... You need to find the reference angle first. Okay, are you guys familiar with the term reference angle? Have you heard of this? Sudut, uh, what to say? I think BM quite hard. For those take English, you all might know this term, reference angle. Okay, reference angle is basically the angle uh, referred to the x-axis. That's why we call it reference angle. So, suatu sudut yang berpandukan paksi x. Means the angle you get here, guys, will always be in quadrant satu. Yeah, yeah, sudut rujukan. Correct. Ah, base angle also can. Okay. So, it will always be in the quadrant pertama. Acute angle. Yeah, sukuan. Correct. So, you can see over here, kalau kamu tekan calculator, cos inverse satu per dua. You, all, you guys can press lah in calculator. You should get 60. Okay. So, then, kamu kena fikir lah. Adakah jawapan kamu 60 sahaja? I don't think so, right? Because you have quadrant 2 and 3. Kamu ada dua possibility. Okay, because cos is negative kat sini. Nilai cos negative. That means cos negative, again, we call ASTC. Maksudnya quadrant kedua dan ketiga lah, cos negative. Okay, so this is why it's quadrant 2 and 3. So this is how I get the 120 and 240. So I told the upload to datang dari 180 minus 60. Okay, because the angle is like this. So do dia macam ni. 60 kat sini. And then over here, 180 plus 60. You get 240 kat sini. And then I want to ask you guys, how the 480 and 600 come? Macam mana yang tu datang? Ah, uh, wait, uh, guys. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Sorry, uh, guys, for just now. Block ready. Yeah, I think see luck. Never mind. We continue. Okay, hey, sorry. Okay, this one, ah. Huh? So how you get the 480 and 600, guys? Any clue, ah? Huh? Macam mana datang yang dua ni lagi? Because this one, I think you all understand, right? How you get 120, 240? How suddenly this one come? Very good. Plus 60, plus 360. Kena ingat, ah, guys. Dua pi. What is the value of two pi? 360, 2 cycle, right? Yes, betul. You can go your limit until 2 cycle. 
because this ah uh, guys julat yang ni adalah untuk a saja julat untuk sudut a tapi kamu kena sedar you must realize your angle here is 2a means that julat ni kena darab dengan 2 you must times both of this range by 2 means 2 pi times 2 you get 4 pi okay yeah correct 180 minus 60 okay means you take 360 times 2 you get 720 that's why limit kamu adalah sampai 720 sekarang bukan 360 macam matematik modern kamu your modern maths the limit up till 360 only but ad maths can go up till 1080 also can i think the largest okay itu menggambarkan berapa kali putaran the number of rotation one rotation 360 second rotation 720 third rotation 1080 Okay, so this is why I just plus 360 kepada dua-dua sudut. Andy, because the range here multiply by 2, julat ni dah didarab dengan 2. Sebab kalau kamu nampak sudut ni 2A, bukan A. Okay, kalau kat sini saya letak 2A, kat sini pun kena darab 2 lah untuk bagi dia sama. Okay, kosong darab 2 tak ubah, kosong. But 2 pi darab 2, kamu dapat 4 pi. Kalau kamu cuba kira 4 pi dalam darjah, berapa nilai kamu dapat? 4 darab 180, 720 nilai kamu. Okay, you get total of 720 degree for 4 pi lah untuk 4 pi. 2 pi, 360. Ah, So this is why I can go up till 600. Limit saya sampai 600. Okay, so you can see the relationship here guys. 120, I plus 360, I get 480. 240, I plus 360, I get 600. As easy as that. Kamu tambah 360 kepada sudut sebelumnya sahaja. Maksudnya kat sini ada dua sudut, kamu tambah dua-dua pun dengan 360. You plus both by 360. You get 480 and 600. Okay, but make sure your final answer, kamu kena bahagi semua ni dengan dua. Because they want your answer in terms of A. Dalam sebutan A. Okay, so you will get 60, 120, 240, 300. Okay, so then you make sure leave your answer in terms of pi. Beri jawapan dalam sebutan pi. So you get all this value over here. Okay guys, can you get it? Part A2, boleh faham? This is a normal process kamu akan melalui bila belajar Twigo. And especially in paper 2. Kena selesaikan macam ni. You must solve this kind of problem. Okay, uh, guys, do you all understand? Boleh faham tak? Try to comment. Okay, so next one. We discuss last one lah, then we stop already. Because question 5 is the last one, basically. Okay, so now, ah, uh, sketching graph. So, I give you all a bit of tips here lah. Tentang cara lukisan graph. Okay. So this one lah guys, when you see this kind of symbol, adakah kamu akan mempunyai graph di bawah paksi X? Will you have a graph below X axis when you see this symbol? No, correct. Okay, because this symbol is modulus. Modulus maksudnya semua nilai positif saja. So this is why you can see your answer is all positive. Okay, semua nilai positif saja. Okay, so you can see this part lah guys, this is the ori graph yang kamu lukis, original. You see all this value dah dipantulkan ke atas. Already reflected on top. If you guys can imagine lah. Macam ni lepas tu yang ni pun ke atas. Okay. If I draw out and show you, I think you all can see lah. You see this part, you just reflect it. Pantulkan saja. Kamu dapat macam ni. This one also reflect. And then you cancel this one. Then you can see. Can you see guys? Macam serupa kan? But then you must plus one. Because they ask here to plus one. Tambah satu maksudnya gerak satu unit ke atas. Move on top. So this is how you get this graph. Senang macam tu saja. Can you guys see it? Huh? How to draw this graph. The fast method. Pantulkan, lepas tu setiap titik shift one unit upward. Pindah satu unit ke atas saja. So you get this graph. Okay? Can get it lah guys. No, uh, which part you don't understand, Andy? Hold. Okay, I, I show you the second method. Uh. 
there's a second method for this. Maybe you understand the second method. Okay, so if you see this one, uh, you look at your limit, 0 to 2 pi. Okay, don't care about the whole graph. If they ask you to draw a normal graph, Andy, not in Trigo chapter, graph biasa saja, macam mathematic. Okay, they ask you to draw. What is your step? How to draw a graph? What is the basic step? Apa kamu kena cari untuk lukis graph tu? Now I give you a concept. Apa saya perlu buat? Langkah basic. Others also can answer, huh, guys. Not only for Andy. What is the basic step I need to draw a graph? Jangan refer yang ni semua. Don't look at all this. Any idea, guys? Uh, yes, part of it. But what is the thing you need to draw a graph? The basic thing. Apa component paling penting untuk lukis graph? What is the thing or info we must get? Yes, very good, Andy. Sudut, that is the keyword. Okay, you must have the sudut, angle. So how do I get the angle, guys? From this range over here. Dari julat yang ni. Maksudnya, saya boleh pilih mana-mana sudut yang saya suka. Untuk plot graph. I can choose any angle I like to plot the graph. Okay. So let's say lah. Kamu boleh guna macam ni. Kosong pi dan dua pi. If you want you can also use pi over 2. Dan juga tiga pi bahagi dua. Untuk bagi dia lengkap lah. Pi over 2 is 90 darjah. Tiga pi over 2 is 270 darjah. These are the four basic angle. 90, 80, 270, 360. Lengkap lah. 2 pi tu 360. So tak boleh atas dah. Cannot do more. Okay, so what is the concept I apply here? Huh? Saya gantikan sahaja. I just substitute the A value inside the equation over here. Okay, let's say A is 90. Saya gantikan 90 kat sini dan cari nilai Y. Tekan calculator sahaja. All of this. And plot the point. Kamu plot sahaja. And then continue. When A is 180, cari nilai Y. When A is 270, cari nilai Y kamu. When A is 360, cari nilai Y kamu. Sekarang kamu dah ada empat titik yang diplot kat sini. And from there, you try to estimate the shape. Cuba jangkakan bentuk graf tu akan datang macam mana. Let's say you cannot understand how to do this step. Can you guys get it ah, my method? Saya ambil titik random saja and just uh, substitute and find the coordinate. Lepas tu plot saja. Just plot and connect all the dots. Sambungkan semua titik macam tu sahaja. Then you will get this graph lah. Kamu akan dapat yang ni. Jadi tak perlu melalui proses macam ni. You don't need to go from here to here then to here. Lebih complex yang ni. But if you just choose random point and plot, you can already draw out the graph. Tanpa menghafal bentuk graph. You don't need to memorize the graph shape also. This is another advantage. Okay, so this can apply to any type of graph. Sine graph, cos graph, tangent graph. Semua boleh guna kaedah ini. You just take a random point, substitute in the equation, cari nilai y. Then you plot. Just like how you draw a normal graph. Okay, so you can see the marks over here. Kat mana kamu akan dapat empat marka. You must draw a cosine graph, first of all. Graph cosinus. And then it must have one and a half cycle. One, one over two cycle lah. Okay, kalau kamu boleh nampak lah, this is one cycle, satu kitaran lengkap, lepas tu setengah, terhenti dah kat sini, stop over here. So means this is one and a half cycle. Okay, and then they say max 4 mean 1, maksudnya titik maximum kamu kena 4, titik minimum kamu kena 1. Mereka akan check juga, kalau yang tu kamu betul. Okay, if not correct, then kamu hilang lah marka ini. Kamu takkan hilang semua marka, guys. You just lose one mark only for this point if you get it wrong. And then modulus graph, how they check? Macam mana mereka periksa? Mereka akan tengok lah sama ada graph kamu seluruh dia atas pasi X atau tak. They will check whether your whole graph is above the X-axis. Kalau tengok graph tu di bawah kat sini, maksudnya salah lah. This point gone. Okay, guys. Can you get it? Boleh faham tak? This whole question number five. Okay, so let me see. Huh? Did we complete? Yes. 
Okay, so I think the question that you all really wanted, I can complete the deal. So the rest, I think you all can go through, right, guys? Yang lain semua. There's a lot of question left, but all the solution here. Sampai page seratus, until hundred. Okay, so this one you all can go through lah one by one. This is all the actual SPM question. Soalan SPM sebenarnya. So this is like revision lah for you all before trial. Soalan ni takkan keluar lah. They won't ask you, but it's just as a concept only for you all, as a guide. Panduan. Okay, guys. So how you found it today, the technique? Do you guys understand better? Especially on the Trigo chapter lah, we discuss a lot on that today. Trigo dan probability, kita buat. 